Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today the car I'm going to be taking a look at is the Jaguar F-Type. Now I've filmed with quite a few F-Types before now, but the difference with this one is that we've got a manual gearbox. So at the LA Auto Show last year, Jaguar reintroduced the manual for the F-Type. Having previously had the 8-speed ZF box available in each of the engine specifications, they've now introduced this new 6-speed manual that you can have in the V6 and the V6S models of the F-Type. So we have here the 3-litre V6, the standard car, 335 brake horsepower. And of course, the most important thing I'll swing around and show you is that it now has a manual gear stick, six speed gear stick in the center and a third pedal, the clutch pedal down there in the footwell. Now I've spent quite a bit of time driving with F-types before now. The first one I test drove the V8S convertible when it was brand new. Then I joined Jaguar on Millimilia for a test run in the F-Type R Coupe when it was brand new. Before when I was in California last year, I rented an F-Type V6S for my time out there and Jaguar USA provided me with the F-Type R to drive for a week or two. So I spent a good amount of mileage between those four F-Types before now. Um, so I have a pretty good feel for the car and it's one I'm a big fan of. I've enjoyed driving it a lot just as a very all-round enjoyable comfortable relaxed ride and they sound astronomically awesome there is no question about that i'm going to run over the car's sort of details and specifications a little bit more um, later on in this video after going out for a short drive but just some sort of highlights of course the 335 horsepower engine the base model as you will um, it's 57,000 pounds or so um, and for an F-Type comes on, I suppose, almost unusually small wheels, the 18-inch wheels. Um, often you'll find them with significantly larger. We've obviously got the folding roof mechanism, fully automated, but for a base spec, it's a pretty nice interior finish, full leather, electric seats, every sort of comfort you'd want, but you do lose a bit in the way of the anodized sort of colored parts and the um, paddle shifters and start button that you have on the uh, uh, more superior models. But it's certainly not a bad place to be, pretty comfortable inside. Like I said, I'll run around that a little bit more further on. For now, even without the dynamic exhaust, let's fire it up and hear how it sounds. As you walk up to the car with the key that you can leave in your pocket, one press of the button here on the door handle, it fires out, and then you pull the door open, of course. Jump in. Now, foot on the brake and the clutch, of course. And there's a start stop button here on the center console. And the air vents rise up out of the center console as well. It's always a fun feature controlled through these lovely dials. Now, with it in neutral, let's hear how it sounds. manually not something I do that often anymore to be honest I haven't actually owned a manual car I think for three years or so now when I had my previous one because of obviously all the double clutch gearboxes we have even the um, sort of automatics like you normally have in the F-Type are getting so good that I guess for emissions reasons for fuel economy reasons um, for speed of shifts and lap times and the like you want an automatic gearbox so the manuals are sort of disappearing. I guess everyone knows that now. You can't buy a Ferrari or a McLaren or a Lamborghini with a manual gearbox. Um, so, from the sports car world, you've got a couple of Porsches, of course. New Cayman GT4. That would be a pretty good car. I had a quick test drive. Lovely, lovely thing. Um, and I wouldn't mind, at some point, owning another manual myself, but we'll have to see what happens. But this is a very unique kind of product. It's about £1,800 cheaper to have the manual gearbox. A little bit of the exhaust coming in there and I suppose it's more or less what you'd expect I'm personally 
feeling that I'm lacking the exhaust noise in this car going along. There's barely any sound at all, although I can press the button to put it into dynamic mode and then we'll get a little bit more. I'll just come to a stop, downshift it, but you can hear the really muted exhaust sound from the car without a... Uh, right, let's make some noise. crackles and if you had the dynamic or the active exhaust system you'd have a lot more of that going on as well. I need to find a good bit of road where I can properly open up the car. And there is something pretty fun about doing it yourself and feeling the interaction of the car. Um, certainly out on a nice countryside road this thing is really good fun. Um, in the town earlier not so much fun. Just It just feels a little bit too silent and too much work almost. Uh, but here, where I can actually open it up, it's awesome. You can hear quite clearly that the exhaust system opens itself up at 4000 RPM and below that it is very, very muted sort of a blip, blipping the downshift, you don't get that much out of it. But then you get that. <laughs> In general terms, the F-Type is a highly regarded car. It has a great ride, brilliant steering feel, just a great all-round comfortable driving experience, but it is very much a GT car, and I think that's really where it feels like it needs that automatic box more than, you know, say the Porsche mid-engined or even the Caterham style cars do with the manual car. If you want a manual, you go and buy a full driver's car, uh, which I've sort of slightly mixed, because I love the car, I love the refinement of the F-Type, and I love the noise when you get some higher up the rev range and are able to push it on a little bit. I really love the noise. Well, you know, I've spent so much time talking about it before now in other videos. something just not quite right, you know, it feels too much like a GT, too much like the kind of car you want to go on a long distance cruise or drive across Europe in, and that's where you wouldn't necessarily want this gearbox. Although, no question, it is fun, and it is a little bit cheaper. Um, just a little bit unsure, perhaps, I mean, I'm perhaps not the right kind of person, I clearly am clearly a, a man of the sort of technology generation, I suppose, and I'm into my fast changing gearboxes, stuff like in the supercars, where they're changing in sort of almost non-existent numbers of milliseconds now. Um, there's no question it's a fun drive um, and a pretty involving drive, but I'm just not sure, I'm just not sure. I think I would have, I'd be a V6S man with the eight-speed automatic. comes into its own. That's where it's fun. Just a little bit of misbehavior and excitement. Wow. It's a fun drive, there's no question about that, but whether it's the right choice, I'm not entirely sure. The F-Type itself is brilliant, luxurious, comfortable, a great drive. I just think for me, it would be an automatic gearbox. But let's take a look around it in a little bit more detail, some of the exterior features and interior. Um, so like I said, looks brilliant in this configuration. The red with the contrasting silver, the wheels, the uh, side fender part and around the front grille. It's a design that hasn't changed at all since introduction yet and it doesn't really need to. F-types look great, very aggressive, menacing front look. Very modern headlight sort of design. I said it's running on the smaller wheels, the 18-inch wheels. Those help with the comfort of the ride, no question. Um, although they do look a little bit strange almost by modern standards with so much black from the rubber um, surrounding them. I'll pop the roof up in a moment so we can see that. Around the rear, I've always loved this design, the light shape that we've got going on. And then on the V6 and the V6S, you have the center mounted exhausts, exhaust tips, and the V8, you have them actually on either side of the rear. So you can tell the difference between the models. This wing comes up at about 60 miles per hour or so. Sits a little angle. If I pop open the boots while we're here, 
you can fit some luggage in there. You can get like a, the suitcases you can take on an aeroplane. But you've really got to pack carefully considering your luggage if you want to get much. And you've got this sort of smaller stowage area so that stuff doesn't move around while you're driving. Um, let's jump in, take a look at the inside. Maybe first I'll pop the roof up. Which I think you do by just turning on the ignition. I've got the key in my pocket. There we go. And then you have a series of buttons, but this is the roof one. Now I've got to take a lucky guess as to whether I push it or I pull it. I'm gonna go with push. No, that's the wrong way. Pull to close the roof. Sorry about the light, but very easy. Doesn't take long at all, and then the windows will come up afterwards. Done. So the other buttons and features we've got in here. First, I'll just close the door. Stop it chiming away at us. Surrounding this gear stick, which is actually quite a nice feel, you know? Um, doesn't perhaps look like the smartest item in the world, but certainly nothing wrong with it. Um, around here, you've got the roof button, you've got the dynamic mode, which just sharpens everything up a little bit. Um, bad weather, of course, mode electronic handbrake so it automatically releases as you drive away but to apply the handbrake you just have your foot on the brake and pull it on and I'll push it off you can sort of hear the electronics at work traction control button start stop on the engine and manual spoiler raise start stop um, turning on your music and volume and a cigarette socket alongside that then we've got the air conditioning controls and I said these are all really really nice finish the uh, trim and sort of style and the way it all works and you turn it off by a press of the centre one and then you have your buttons under here which are just all very nicely finished for a car like this and I'm not sure if you could see it before but the air vents on the top when you turn the air conditioning back on they fold back out which is just a really nice design feature above this touchscreen navigation display with your usual sort of commands and controls and everything you'd expect going into media uh, I've got nothing in at the moment phone navigation mode we were in and general vehicle settings and other bits and bobs you can get to and there are some shortcuts to those down here as well um, over on the steering wheel lots of controls on the wheel to use you've got the media controls volume next last uh, mode and phone um, you've got speed limiter heated steering wheel um, cruise control settings surrounding what is quite a nice wheel leather finished a very large wheel it feels um, but no no complaints with it at all um, all the seat controls and memory controls are over here on the door panel including lumbar support and um, the width of the seat and the uh, um, what do you call it backrest um, pressing out lots of movement you can do uh, what else do we have we've got a button for the boot and fog lights mirror controls are on the door here um, and then let's take a look at the gauges. So you've got the speedometer on the left, of course, a digital display in the center and the rev counter at the right. And you can bring up a whole series of different modes and settings. And I've accidentally put my iPod on, let's turn that off. I don't even know what that song is, but that's fine. Um, and uh, maybe I need the engine running to see what it looks like. I'll turn that back off, sorry. Um, shows us the passengers and whether you've got your seat belts on and that kind of thing. Um, go through the iPod. Oh yeah, that's literally just changing track on the iPod. Um, I suppose you can do things through the stalks and a series of other controls. Um, what else do we have to show you then? Um, storage box in the backrest. Slightly awkward to get to, but decent amount of capacity in there. Um, the armrest box, pretty small, but the iPod plugs for the USB and the nav sticker in there. Two cup holders in here, um, glove box over there, decent size glove box. Um, so it's a pretty nice cabin, um, wind deflector on the back here. Um, and then up top, a couple of other um, controls for, I guess, Jaguar's help and support system. No, no lights on the, uh, on the mirrors. But You've probably seen it. The sound system's very good as well. I can't show it, unfortunately, for copyright reasons, but it is pretty good. Shut the car back off. Um, and yeah, it's a comfortable interior. 
practical interior and overall a very nice car. Um, it's fun, good to be able to go out driving again in another Jaguar F-Type. You can see how it looks with the roof back up. So yeah, I've certainly enjoyed driving the car with the manual gearbox. I'm just not entirely convinced it would be my choice. I think the die-hard manual fans who happen to want an F-Type are going to absolutely love the availability of this um, combination. Um, just for me, it feels more like the F-Type would fit into my lifestyle as more of a GT daily driver kind of car. And in that kind of scenario, it's going to be the auto boxes that sort of slightly better fulfill the requirements and needs of the car. But I'm not complaining. It's great fun. Certainly a good car to drive. Certainly a good car. Um, so yeah, it's good on Jaguar for, for making it, I think, for hearing the audience and going out there and putting a manual gearbox back into their two-seater sports car. And I... Uh, I think some people probably are going to really, really enjoy this one. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching my video with the Jaguar F-Type, the V6 manual, and I'll catch up with you again very, very soon. Cheers. I'm going to be jumping on board the Delta Red 675 LT with Rob, my instructor. And it looks breathtaking. I was hoping. For